main idea of the bench is to use precast concrete cinder blocks as legs and fill the holes up with cement. This is the base or the first blocks that were laid. I used type S mortar mason mix to glue them down to the floor. I used the largest precast cinder blocks I could find. These are 8 by 10 by 16. They're 16 inches deep, 10 inches wide, and 8 inches high. They're spaced to line up with the leg supports on the lathe. I also let the two bricks dry a few days before I continued to brick them up so that nothing shifted. Once you get the base set, it's a fairly straightforward process. You just keep adding mortar and putting bricks one on top of each other. I routinely check to make sure that they were level to each other. You can adjust as you go by adding or subtracting the amount of mortar you put in between the bricks, but I tried to keep it relatively consistent. So you can see the legs are ready here for the cement and rebar to place, be placed on the inside. They actually turned out to be quite level to each other, so I was fairly happy about that. Now I was going to use rebar to reinforce the cinder blocks, but I remembered that I had a bunch of T-shaped automatic garage door opener track laying around from a garage door opener that went bad a few years ago. I decided to cut it up into lengths and use it as reinforcement. To fill the blocks, I used a mixture of three parts standard ready to use concrete mix, the stuff with the aggregate already in it, as well as one part high early strength concrete mix, and I also added about half a bag of precision grout. In addition, I dumped in whatever mortar I had left over. I mixed it up so that the consistency was relatively thin so that it would flow easily into the spaces. I filled the blocks fully up with cement. During the process, I would occasionally run a piece of pipe in the cement to remove any potential voids or air pockets. Also, at the end of filling the blocks up with cement, I placed the reinforcing bar in it. You don't see it in the video, but it's all there. There we go. A pair of cement boots for a Chinese lathe. Perfect. Lots of people call them boat anchors. This will keep it at the bottom of the ocean for sure. Anyway, once you're at this point, it's time to let the cement dry for at least a week. A month is even better to allow the cement to achieve a strength that is considered close to its full value. I didn't have the patience to wait for a month, so I waited for about a week. It's also important to note that the temperature should be kept to around 20 degrees Celsius to allow the cement to cure properly. For our lesson on how not to use a power tool, we are going to improperly use a tile saw to cut a piece of granite countertop. You can get diamond blades and use your scale saw, but I didn't want to spend any more money than I had to. I have a cheap tile saw that I use for various renovation projects. I made a makeshift fence using C-clamps and a piece of plywood, flipped the saw over, turned on a garden hose, and proceeded to cut the granite to size. It actually worked quite well, and I was surprised how well the finish was on the cut. Back to the cement boots. I mixed up some high strength grout and placed it on the legs, about 3 8 to half inch thick. The grout was mixed so that it flowed relatively easily. I was guessing a bit, too thin and it would all squeeze out. I placed a piece of granite countertop on top and leveled it out using my construction level. You could place a precision level on this surface and find that it's out by a fair amount. Now, there are great debates going on as we speak on whether a lathe needs to be level to do precision work. I'm not going down that rabbit hole in this video, and we'll leave that to all those people arguing, and we're going to try to get something done here. I also don't own a precision level, so I'm going to use the tools that I have. I used granite countertop because it's quite flat. I was hoping that this would eliminate or seriously reduce the amount of stress put on the lathe bed. The next step involved drilling holes in the granite 
so that the anchors could be placed in the cement. I've never drilled holes in granite before. I just purchased a diamond tipped hole saw at my local hardware store. It worked fairly well. Use a fair bit of water. Uh, take your time. Don't apply too much pressure. Uh, one of the things is there's no center pilot on the, the hole saws, so you have to start them on an angle. So it's a bit tricky to get them lined up, but once the hole started, it's fairly easy to finish the hole off. The hole saw was a fair bit larger than the anchor. I think I used a three quarter inch hole saw and was planning on using a half inch anchor, so there was some wiggle room there. I then drilled holes in the cement for the anchors. I used my previous drip pan as a template to make sure the holes were exactly in the right spot. I used an SDS uh, hammer drill with a Bosch drill, but it worked very well. I lifted the lathe off the old bench using a standard chop crane and uh, a fabric sling. Um, those fabric slings work great. If you don't have one, I'd highly suggest you get one. It beats chain any day of the week. It doesn't scratch things, and it's a lot easier to work with. So just make sure it's obviously rated for the load you're trying to pick up. I anchored the lathe to the bench using half inch sleeve anchors. I think I used eight inch ones. So once everything was assembled, I decided to take a test cut using the new bench. I decided to go a little aggressive to see how rigid this setup really was. I dialed in on one eighth depth of cut, so that's a quarter inch off the diameter, and proceeded to take the cut. I then decided to check the taper on the current setup just as it was. I hadn't added any shims to the lathe yet or did any other tests. So I chucked up a piece of scrap stock and took a few skim cuts. When I do this, I put the lathe on a fairly slow speed and take a very, very small cut with a very, very sharp tool. I use high-speed steel. Uh, there's essentially no radius on the tool. There might be a very, very small one. And again, like a tooth out depth of cut. So I took a skim cut, um, 
there's a little bit of there might be a little bit of error in what I'm doing here but this is just a quick check to see if we're t cutting any taper uh, I'll, I'll measure it down at this end and I'll measure it here, closer to the chuck. And we're in tenths, within tenths, and that's about over four inches. It may be four tenths, five tenths out. Um, I'm not going to chase after that, the tenths right now. Uh, it, the lathe still may require some shimming under the where it's bolted to the the table or the bench but I'm pretty happy with that with the way it is right now uh, I might chase after that a little bit of accuracy at another point but you can see the surface finish on this looks pretty good uh, as well uh, and I'm very impressed with the rigidity improvement So what did it cost? Well, up here with the Northern Peso, we pay a lot more for things than our friends down south, but I got eight cinder blocks for about $4 each. I also spent about $30 on cement, grout, and mortar. I did manage to find a piece of granite countertop for free. Uh, if you scrounge on your local Craigslist or Kijiji, you can find people that are selling it quite reasonably priced. You can also hang out at a local countertop place and make sure you talk to the guys in the back, not the people in the office, to see if they have any offcuts. I also purchased two half-inch sleeve anchors for about $12. So I had about $74 into this project. Not too bad at all.